I'm not sure if you've noticed what I have noticed. Perhaps you have. If you watch the news at night, I do that at 11 o'clock. Sometimes I regret it. And uh, I don't know if you read the newspaper. If you have, you perhaps have noticed this, particularly if you read the editorial page. I do that every day primarily to make sure no one has written something about me. <laughs> and uh, certainly, I've noticed it in there, especially the last few weeks. And maybe you've noticed among your own family, friends, coworkers, people you associate with, have you noticed that many people are unhappy right now? Many people are very unhappy. They're not happy because we don't have enough school bus drivers to take children to school, and so parents need to reorganize their life to do that. Some people are not happy that they have to wear a mask in school, here in church or in other public places. Similarly, but on the other side, some people are unhappy that many people are refusing to wear a mask in school, in church, or in other public places. Some are not happy over the pending federal mandate for employers who employ 100 people or more, St. Gregory the Great would be one of them, to enforce vaccination and, if not vaccination, weekly testing for the COVID virus. Some are not happy over the fact that many who are unvaccinated are also not willing to wear a mask or be willing to be tested. Some are not happy over the vaccine requirement to be at the Bills game. I don't think that's the reason you're all here. Uh, <laughs> but some are unhappy over that or to go to Shays. And yet some are further unhappy because um, some of the Bills players are refusing to be vaccinated and they're allowed to be in that stadium and the people watching them must be vaccinated. In the last couple of weeks, some have been very unhappy over the law in Texas and their tightening of abortion. Some have been unhappy in the last couple days over the House of Representatives passing, now sending to the Senate for vote, a bill to codify further rights to murder the unborn. And uh, a sidebar, I am quoting the Pope on that one because, you know, many have been quoting the Pope lately regarding uh, not using the Eucharist as a battleground when it comes to elected officials. And, of course, the Eucharist should never be a battleground. But the second half of the statement often does not get remembered that the Pope in the very same time said very clearly, abortion is murder plain and simple. Some are unhappy over our governor's mandating of health care workers to uh, be vaccinated by 5 p.m. tomorrow. A very critical day for all of us in western New York and through the state, what will happen. And some patients and families, some of our own parish who I've interacted with, are unhappy because they've had loved ones in hospitals where They've contracted the coronavirus. And some healthcare workers as a whole are unhappy over the entire mandate. And some are unhappy over the political leaders who will state that a woman has the right to choose whatever goes on in her body regarding the unborn, but at the same time, those same elected officials 
do not acknowledge a right for an individual to decide what injection will be put into their body and consistent. Some were unhappy with Mr. Trump over building a wall on the Texas border, and if you watch the news this past week, there were many who were unhappy with the thousands of Haitian refugees trying to get in to Texas. I suppose we're unhappy if we build a wall, and we're unhappy if we do not build a wall. <laughs> Unhappiness over the way the bishops have handled the sexual abuse crisis in the church. And let me tell you, there are many priests who are very unhappy because they were wrongfully accused, have proven that they were wrongfully accused, and uh, did not get the same clearing of their name on the six o'clock news as did when they were wrongfully accused. Do I need to continue the list? I think we got the point. And you came to church today, maybe in part to get away from some of the unhappiness, and here I bring it all back. Hmm? <laughs> so hopefully the scripture will change that, but uh, that didn't happen either. Because if you listen to the second reading, St. James, he's not too happy today as he appears to be condemning the wealthy. And Jesus himself, not too happy, is he? He's almost starting to sound like a preview of a Friday the 13th movie on the dismembering of the body. Better to cut off the arm or the leg than to be thrown into Gehenna with both of them. Tie a millstone around the neck and be thrown into the sea. Not too happy. It truly is a no bueno time. We're not too happy. Why? Why is there this great unhappiness? Why? Why is James unhappy? Why is Jesus unhappy? And, and why are so many in our community and country and world so unhappy. Why? Well, there's really a one-word answer, and that one-word answer is sin. That's why we're so unhappy. James was unhappy not because people were wealthy, but because of the sin of some who were wealthy exploiting the poor. That's why James was unhappy over that sin. And Jesus was unhappy over the little ones being led astray. And we are unhappy because by and large in our society, we are all living with the effects of sin. And in particular, the sins against the dignity of life. Sins against the dignity of life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death. And many of those who put these sins forward or promote them, they are also unhappy. Mrs. Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, allegedly a Catholic, was very unhappy when Texas announced their new law. I saw her on the news vowing to change that. But on Friday, she was very happy and smiled on the news because she put through the bill she wished in the House to further the murder of unborn children. The President Mr. Biden, another supposed Catholic, has not been too happy. And not too happy to the point that back earlier in September, he stated very clearly that uh, 
life does not begin at conception, direct opposite of what our catechism teaches a good Catholic. And there are those who silently agree with these positions. And they're not happy either. Why? Because of people like me who keep bringing them up on the other side. That's why. And there are those who silently disagree with these crimes against humanity. And they're not happy either. I suppose, in part, some are not happy because they wished they had the courage to take a greater stand and do not. And some are probably unhappy simply because they're tired of the debates going on. And then there are those who fight very vocally against the sins against human life. And we're not happy either because we have to continue that fight. Well, what is the cure to this unhappiness? What's the cure? Well, Jesus gives us the cure today. Remove what is causing you to sin. When he says, cut off your arm or leg, rip out your eye, it's better to lose that than to go to hell. He's really saying, remove whatever it is that's causing you to sin. And then you will be restored not only to happiness, but to joy. But very often we, we make excuses as to why we cannot remove things. And we make excuses to allow sin to remain in our lives. For those who maybe struggle with some of the darker places on the internet that the computer can take you, they may say, well, it's not really practical for me to remove my computer from this room, even though the room is kind of isolated and alone. Or maybe make a statement that's really completely impossible to live without the internet. Excuses. And for some, they might say, well, I personally don't believe this or wouldn't personally act that way, but who am I? to say that someone else cannot. Another excuse is, I'm a good Catholic, but you know, politics is really separate from faith. I suppose we compartmentalize Christ rather than allowing our belief in God to be the very foundation upon which we stand and make every single decision of our lives. Excuses. And then probably one that most of us have succumbed to or heard. You know, I just want there to be peace of the family, so I'll look the other way and I won't say anything. I'll just keep my mouth shut. Do any of those excuses sound familiar to you? I think they do. I propose that we need to move from a very simplistic view of sin and just trying to avoid sin personally and rather pursue with a focus the reward of finding true freedom and joy in Christ. The law of God and a true relationship with Christ is freedom and leads to joy. If we do not pursue freedom in Christ in every facet of our life, it may just cause us to lose an arm and a leg, or even worse, to lose eternal life. You know, I believe personally society right now has a huge millstone around its neck. And if you don't know what a millstone is, there's a picture of it. From my trip to the Holy Land among the 3,000 pictures, I have pictures of millstones. This one was excavated in the Sea of Galilee area where the multiplication of the loaves took place. And a millstone, that's what Jesus is saying, it's better to have that around your neck and be thrown into the sea than to lead someone astray. It was a rock used to grind down grain. That's what a millstone is. I think society today has a huge millstone around its neck. And I propose that all of the unhappiness is really caused 
because of sin and looking the other way, the excuses. I propose to you we all need to change. And we all need to change so that we do not die with the millstone around our neck. And we all need to pray, to ask our Lord's guidance through these many critical and difficult questions that face us. I don't ever hear of those in leadership telling us they're praying for that guidance. And if you really think about that day of judgment when it will come for us all, do you really think God is going to judge us if we were wealthy or poor? Do you think God is going to just judge us based on the fact that we were a Democrat or a Republican? Do you think God is going to judge us because we were liberal or conservative? I don't think so. I think God is going to primarily care and judge us if we use our lives and our resources to assist others in his name and to follow his law of life from the moment of conception to the moment of death. God is the author of life. The Democratic nor Republican parties are the author of life. All issues of human life belong clearly to God, not to politics. God will judge us on our ability to follow his law and his way of life. And that judgment day, for some, may very well include a millstone around their neck for all of eternity. My basic point today is simple. Sin causes unhappiness. Sin destroys human life. And any sin against human life is mortal and grave and serious. And the sin of one person does directly affect many other individuals. As a society, we need to really reflect on the root cause of all of this unhappiness upon the sins within our own nation and to once again focus on being one nation under God, which includes following his law.